Well, I'm going to attempt to hold one of these now, and I have to confess, I'm actually really nervous about it. How you guys doing? I'm Chris Ignato, and you're watching Nature Now. So, finally, through much searching, I finally found what I was hoping to. And that is a whole bunch of black and yellow Argiopes. I knew they'd be in this meadow with all this goldenrod being September. And uh, they are getting big. If you live in the United States or almost anywhere in North America, then you may have strolled through a late summer meadow and found yourself frozen in your tracks and gazing frightfully at one of these magnificent and large spiders. Like everything else, there are many names for these spiders. Some of those names are zigzag spiders, corn spiders, garden spiders, but uh, I like to call them the Argiopes. So the name Argiope arantia actually translates into gilded silverface. And if you look at the cephalothorax, you can actually see where they're coming from with that name. Now these spiders are part of the orb weaver group, and you can see why by looking at their giant wagon wheel shaped webs. Those webs are perfectly located in meadows and fields where grasshoppers, butterflies, and other large insects and invertebrates can be frequently seen. Now it seems that grasshoppers are these spiders' favorite food source, and I think that's because of the grasshopper and spider's robust size. You know, grasshopper provides a decent meal for one of these spiders, where any other invertebrate would probably just be a bit of a snack. When a prey lands in the web, the spider will quickly dart towards it, and it'll spin the insect round and round as the spider throws dozens and dozens of strands of silk around it, almost instantaneously. This both immobilizes prey and reduces destruction to the web. Either immediately after, and occasionally before the food is shrink-wrapped, the spider will deliver a bite, often on a leg or joint. This bite, of course, injects powerful venom that subdues the prey and it begins the digestion process. Now sometimes the spider immediately begins feeding, but usually it sets it aside for later on. That is another purpose for all that silk packaging. It basically protects the food from scavengers. And it's also the spider's version of a Ziploc bag. Speaking of zippers, what is that zigzag pattern found in the center of the web? Well, it helps conceal the spider from other predators. And more importantly, it allows birds in flight to see the web before they fly straight through it and destroy all the spider's hard work and home building. It may even serve as a bit of a false target for insects to land on, thinking it's probably just another twig or stem in the meadow. Our jarabees keep their homes pretty clean and free of debris, and they'll rebuild the central spiral of their web every night. The silk of these webs is extremely strong and elastic being many times stronger than steel of the same diameter. Now the silk from these spiders is incredibly strong. If it was as thick as a toothpick, it would be strong enough to ensnare me. If it was as thick as a pencil, it would be strong enough to stop a 747 at speed. This is very strong silk. Listen to the sound it makes when I snap it. If disturbed, the IJP will either immediately drop to the ground and hide, or it'll undulate the web, making the spider bounce back and forth. This makes it difficult to actually see the spider itself, and it can also throw the illusion of the spider actually being bigger than it really is. The male usually dies after mating, and sometimes the female even consumes him before he gets away. When the female lays her eggs, she makes several egg sacs filled with tons and tons of little eggs in them. 
Those egg sacs are huge. I remember the first time I saw them in person, they were about the size of silver dollars. Well, I'm gonna attempt to hold one of these now, and I have to confess, I'm actually really nervous about it. Just the thought of being bit by a spider really disturbs me. I know it's not gonna be any worse than a wasp sting or something, but it's just psychological. Here it goes. Okay. So this is my first time holding one of these. Look at that. And uh, I must say, I was really nervous to pick this up. You won't focus on the spider, will you? Come on, Mr. Camera. Hmm, hold on. These spiders are gorgeous. Well, when it comes to wildlife, I definitely trust my instincts and my intuition. And there you have it. That's a first for me. I've always wanted to do it. And finally had my chance. <laughs> Pretty cool. They're really neat spiders, but I gotta say, they don't like to be on your face. Go figure. In case you were wondering, there she is back in her web, just fine. I handed her to her web and she went right back into it with her meal. While they look very menacing, they rarely bite. And if they do happen to bite you, it's no worse than a wasp sting. However, yeah, I find that kind of interesting when you look at their color. I mean, it's pretty much aposomatic coloration black, yellow, and white, contrasting colors. Incredible, huh? Now those bundles of nope will never cease to captivate me and fill me with a sense of awe and maybe with a little bit of trepidation. <laughs> I really hope you learned a couple of things about the black and yellow argiope and I hope you enjoyed this video. It was a fun one to make and I've been waiting to do it for a few years. So thanks a lot for watching. Once again, I'm Chris Ignato. See you later. That's where you want to sit on my elbow. Don't you dare go down my sleeve. Check this out, watch. Thanks a lot for watching and remember if you like this video be sure to check out this video over here that YouTube has selected specifically for you based on your watch time. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button but you gotta click the bell icon, because if you don't, YouTube will never let you know when a new video of mine comes out. And remember, passion inspires spirit. Chris Ignato, signing out.